Signal. Signal gasoline. Yes, signal gasoline is the new gasoline you can prove is superior. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, The House on Sycamore Road. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Sometimes weakness results only in failure and disillusionment. Sometimes it's much more serious than that. It can take a sinister turn, sending its victim down the spiral that ends only in death. That's the way it was with Harold Phillips on the day he and his wife, Muriel, rented the house on Sycamore Road from old Sabina Fielding. It wasn't much of a house, but it was destined to be the most important element in Harold's life. Like Sabina, it was old. But there was a kind of majesty about it, veiled as it was behind a mat of unkempt shrubbery and a pair of magnificent elms in the front yard. Muriel had objected to it, of course. But there was no other alternative. Rents were sky high, and the house on Sycamore Road was the only answer. As they stand talking with Sabina in the front hallway, Muriel is a little impatient. Well, that just about covers everything, Mrs. Fielding. Yes, I think we'll make out very comfortably here. It's hard to leave. Never thought I'd mind it this much. Of course. Uh, It's been in the Fielding family for now. Let me see. Well, uh, there was Rodney and Lisa. Uh, Yes, uh, five generations. Five generations? Yes. I I do hope you young people will be happy in it. A fine house in its time, you know. A proud house, just like the Fieldings. Yes, we're a proud family. (laughs) None of us ever had money, uh, excepting Richard, of course. Uh, That's my grandson. Richard had money, but it it didn't do him any good. Well, even he's gone now. I'm the last now, the last Fielding. And I'm afraid I haven't much longer. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Fielding. Oh, no, no, no. I'm an old woman, Mr. Phillips. Yes, it's hard to leave. Oh, (laughs) that clock. I can remember when my daddy bought it. Let me see now. Was that 68 or 69? Uh, Mrs. Fielding, Harold will be glad to drive you into town. 68 or 69? Uh, Eh? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'd better be going. I'd be glad to take you. Oh, well, uh, it's only two blocks to the bus stop. I can still walk that far without any trouble. I really think it'll be easier for you now, having just one room in town. You'll be closer to everything. Yes. Yes, so I'm told. Are you sure now? You don't want me to drive you? Oh, you're very kind. And I do like to see that in young people. But I can manage, thank you. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Phillips. (laughs) Goodbye. I know you'll be happy here. I'm sure of it, Mrs. Fielding. Goodbye. Goodbye, young man. Young people, she says. We'll be very happy. For heaven's sakes, Muriel, she'll hear you. I could scream my head off in here and she wouldn't hear me. Come to think of it, screaming wouldn't be a bad idea. Will you quit it? That old crone is probably laughing herself silly right now after pawning off this old barn on us. But, Muriel, you know as well as I do it's the best we can do right now. Where have I heard that before? Well, I'm getting sick of it, Harold Phillips. I'm getting fed up with shabby substitutes. I've got a job. I don't know what else you want. Classified advertisements on a stupid hometown paper. What kind of a job is that? Well, it's the best I can do, and this house is the best I can do. You may as well make up your mind to it. I know, I know. I've been through all that before. But I'm not getting reconciled to it. You can make up your mind to that. Anything else? Yes, you. I can't say it's very inspiring, living in a moth-eaten shanty with an ink-stained nobody. Muriel. And this flock of antiques. That old clock she's so proud of. Listen to it. If you think I'm going to sit here day after day with that thing ticking in my ears... What's got into you anyway? I'm fed up, that's what. Now what are you doing? I'm going to stop this clock. Any objection? Will you be reasonable? Will you shut up? 
Where's the catch on this thing? Oh, look out. You'll knock it over. All right. So I'll knock it over. Oh, now look what you've done. Harold. You hadn't lost your temper again. Harold, look. Why, in the world. Look at all that money. Just look at it. Stuffed away in back of the clock. Hundreds. Thousands. Harold. Oh, Harold, darling. As you sit listening on Monday nights to Signal Oil Company's program, The Whistler, has it ever occurred to you how many millions of persons around the world have never even heard a radio? Missing a lot of pleasure, aren't they? Oh, but wait a minute. Before you start shedding tears for those folks... Just consider the pleasure you yourself may be missing if you haven't yet tried new Signal gasoline. No fooling, folks. You'll never know how much driving pleasure there's left in your car till you try Signal's new super fuel. For new Signal gasoline is packed with performance that's so apparent you can actually feel it, see it, hear it. Here's what I mean. With new Signal gasoline in your car, when you touch the starter, you feel your motor spring instantly to life. When you step on the accelerator, you see your car step ahead with pickup that makes you proud. And even when your motor's working hard uphill, you hear it purr contentedly, proof of signals higher anti-knock. What's more, because you'll be shifting less and shifting waste gasoline, you'll enjoy more high-gear miles, actually go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. I know that's the kind of performance you'd like to enjoy from your car. And here's the easy way to get it. Just drive into one of the friendly stations displaying signals, yellow and black circle signs, and say, fill her up with new signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. like a dream, isn't it, Harold? You and Muriel, kneeling on the floor of Sabina Fielding's old house, literally surrounded with the money that spilled from the old clock. Muriel's in seventh heaven, as you count it. She even called you darling, didn't she? You work automatically, sorting the bills, twenties, tens, fives, into small, neat heaps on the scarred hardwood floor. How much is it, dear? How much altogether? Wait, let, let me finish. I simply can't believe it. 80, it's like a dream. 90, 100. There, that's the last 100. How much altogether? It hardly seems possible. How much, Harold? Tell me. $50,000. Oh. 50000 in currency, small bills. It's probably been hidden away in this compartment behind the clock for years. $50,000. I never thought I'd see this much money all at once. The things we'll be able to do. All the marvelous things I've always dreamed of. All the clothes. Maybe go abroad. Who in the world? Harold, who can it be? I don't know. Oh, well, can't let them in, all this money. We won't answer it. We won't let them in. Well, we'll have to. They can see the lights are on. But all this money. Well, stay here and hide it. I'll see who it is. All right, then. All right, but don't let them in. Nobody must see this money. Nobody must know we have it. Yes? Huh? Who are you? Looking for someone? I figured maybe the old lady fell asleep and couldn't hear me. Old lady? Sure, sure, the old girl, Mrs. Fielding. Oh, oh, well, uh, Mrs. Fielding doesn't live in this house now. Uh, now, wait a second, Oh, no, she doesn't Jack. live here now. She lives in town. Uh, who are you? My wife and I are renting the house. Who are you? Well, I think you might do well to tell me who you are first. Okay. I'll come in and we'll talk things uh, over. Uh, no, no, please, uh, wait a minute. Now, listen, Jack. Look. You see, my, my wife is very ill. We, we can't have any visitors. I don't want to talk to your wife. I can't talk to you now. I'm very busy. Good night. Okay, mister. But I'll be back. So long. Who was it, Harold? Harold? Who was it? What did he want? Wait, wait. Well, why are you snooping from behind those curtains? Well, I want to make sure they... Yeah. Yeah, he's getting in his car. There he goes. There who goes? Who was it, Harold? Uh, uh, a man. Oh, uh, 
Did you set the clock up against the wall again? Yes, the glass was broken. I threw the pieces in the fireplace. Well, where's the money? I put it back in the clock. Who was it? Oh, I don't know. A fellow about my age had a red scar on his right cheek. He wanted to see Mrs. Fielding. He wouldn't give me his name. That's funny. Uh, he said he'd be back. Well, what are we going to do about the money? We can't leave it there. Maybe we could... Harold, what's the matter? Hey, I think I know who he is. Muriel. What did Mrs. Fielding say about Richard Fielding? Something about money? He's dead. She said she was the last, don't you remember? I'm not so sure. That's the trouble. I'm not sure at all. Muriel, we may as well face it. It's not our money. It belongs to him. Don't be stupid. He's dead and she doesn't know anything about it. We found it. It's ours. For the first time in our lives, we have a chance to get off the treadmill and get somewhere. But it isn't ours. Besides, she needs it. She's going to die. We've got a whole lifetime ahead of us. But, uh... I don't know, Muriel. What if it is his? What if he knows about it? We don't know for sure that he's dead. We can find out for sure. How? Mrs. Fielding knows. We're going to call on her the first thing in the morning. It's quite a problem, isn't it, Harold? You know it's wrong to take this money, but $50,000 is enough to set you staggering. Muriel didn't make that decision, did she? You would have made it all by yourself. Yes, Harold, there's only one thing that keeps you from taking it. The thought that someone else may be in on the secret. The man with a scar on his face, for example. You can't sleep all night thinking about him. And neither you nor Muriel stop for breakfast the next morning. At 9 o'clock, you're both talking to Sabina Fielding in her furnished room in town. Uh, sorry, I can't be a better hostess. I'm feeling mighty poorly. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Fielding. We just thought we'd drop by and see if you were settled yet. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You're, you're so kind. I'm really very happy you came. I don't get many visitors, you know. No one cares much about an old woman. Of course, we don't want to tire you. Oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> you're a little like... Part of the family now, living in my house. You do like my house, don't you? Oh, we're in love with it, Mrs. Fielding. It's a lovely old place. Oh, I'm so glad. You see, I didn't want it to go to anyone who wouldn't understand it. Houses are like people, you know. They have to be understood. Not everybody understands my house. It certainly has atmosphere. That, uh, that clock is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Oh, you like it? It's always been my favorite. I'm happy you like it. I guess you understand my clock, too. Richard always wanted it, but he didn't understand it, so I never gave it to him. Why did he want it, Mrs. Fielding? I never knew. Richard and I never got on together. Always said he had bad blood in him. Oh, he could have been such a nice boy. Handsome and strong. Until the accident, at least. Accident? Yes, he was never the same after the accident. He had it coming, though, Richard had. There was bad blood in him. I uh, I don't like to talk about my grandson. Uh, do you ever hear from him? I don't want to talk anymore about him. No, no, not anymore. Ah, uh, would you have some tea? It's a little early, I wish but... you'd tell us about uh, Richard. Uh, have you uh, any uh, idea... Muriel, I'm afraid Mrs. Fielding's tired. We'd better be going. Oh, but I, I'm sorry to be this way. Uh, now, perhaps some other time, uh, when I'm feeling oh, better. Yes, of course. Yes. Come along, Muriel. <laughs> convinced you, didn't it, Harold? It all fits. The scar on the face of the man who called on you last night ties in with Sabina's story of Richard's accident. Her remark about his fondness for the clock. It was too easy, wasn't it? Fifty thousand dollars isn't hidden in a clock and then forgotten. It's Richard's money, and he's bound to come back for it. There was no reason for tiring Sabina any longer. Muriel would have worn her out with questions. After all, Muriel isn't the kind who gives up easily. After you've arrived back at the house, she keeps it up, never letting down for a minute. Harold, of all the ass and There was nothing else to do. She would have told us if you hadn't... Sometimes I think you have the mentality of a child. What more do you want? She practically came right out and said it. He had money. He was in an accident. The scar, you remember? He always wanted the old clock. Could she make it any plainer? All right, all right. 
Joe, move. What are you going to do? We can't do anything. He knows the money's there. What do you mean we can't do anything? We can leave, can't we? When? Right now. Huh. That's a prize suggestion. Why, he could trace us in five minutes. We'd be in jail in a week. Listen, Harold. You've got a chance. For the first time in your shabby, ordinary little life, you've got a chance at something real. Are you going to throw it away? Well, I... I don't know. Sabina knows nothing about the money, Harold. There are only three people in on it. You and I and Richard Fielding. And he's coming back here. He said so. You'll probably never have another chance, Harold. What are you suggesting? Think it over, Harold. There isn't much more time. Yes, think it over, Harold. Is she right? You can see her point, can't you? You will never have another opportunity like this as long as you live. Just more of the same, day after day. Thousands more classified advertisements. Scrimping, pinching pennies, trying to make five dollars do the work of ten. And only Richard Fielding stands between you and everything you ever wished for. Only Richard Fielding. Uh, oh, what's that? Someone's at the door. It's too late. He's come back. Well, what are you waiting for? Let him in. Huh? He's getting impatient, Harold. Let him in. But but he's come for the money. Why, Harold, what's the matter? You said it belonged to him. I don't, I don't know, Muriel. Nothing else we can do, is it? We can't take it. You said so. We'd be traced. Oh, no, you're right. He, he can't take it away. It's the only chance we'll ever have. There's no other way, Harold. Or is there? Why, I... What do you mean, Muriel? He might be difficult, Harold. There's a poker beside the fireplace. Oh, no, I couldn't. All right. Give the money back to him. But it's mine. He can't. Harold, get hold of yourself. Muriel. Harold. Get the poker. Yes, yes, Muriel. The poker. Yes? Hi, I'm... Uh, I'm back again. Hey, you remember me, don't you? I was here the other night. Sure, sure, I, I remember. Uh, what do you want? I'd like to come in for a minute. My car stalled outside. All right, come in. Yeah, I uh, got this far from town, then my jalopy stopped dead on me. I, I didn't even know it was your house till I found myself on the steps again. Well, uh, come in the living room. I, uh, I've been poking up the fire. Yeah, I noticed... Who is it, darling? Oh. Hello. Good evening. What's the matter? What are you looking at? Didn't you ever see a scar on a man's face before, Mrs. Phillips? How do you know my name? I've been in town today asking a few questions. He's the one, Harold. It's he. Now, wait, Jack. Now, Harold. Wait. But... <coughs> oh. The poker, Harold. Pick it up. I, I think I'm going to be sick. Pick the poker up. Put it back where it belongs. I, I've killed him. I've killed a man. Harold, stop it. Get control of yourself. I'm going to be sick. Stop it. I don't feel any better than you do, but it's done now. We've got to go through with it. I've, I've killed him. Maybe you haven't. You better see. Oh, no, I can't. You've got to, Harold. Think of all that money. He's out of the way now. We don't have to worry. See if he's dead. Well? Yes. Yes, he is. Go through his pockets. Oh, I can't. You've got to. See if he had a gun, his identification. There's an automatic and a shoulder holster. You see, he would have killed us. A wallet. Fifteen dollars in it. That's all. It has to be more than that, his identification. Oh, there's nothing else in it, Muriel. A handkerchief in his pocket. There's nothing in this. Nothing here. And that's all. Well, we've got to get rid of him. Get rid of him? We can't leave him here. Take him out to his car. It's it stalled. That was just an excuse to get in here. Where are those chains? Chains? The ones you had in the car, are they still there? Oh, yes, I think so. All right. Weight his body down with them and we'll drop him in the river. We can leave his car somewhere. Uh, He'll never trace him. No identification. And then what? And then we can take our own sweet time. You can give notice at the express in the morning and we'll leave town in a couple of weeks. You can say you've got another job. But the, the money. Don't worry about it. 
There's no one left to talk, is there? You've killed a man, Harold. It stopped you for a while, didn't it? But after that first wave of nauseating panic, you can think more clearly. The weighted body goes into the river, the car left on a lonely road. Then during the next few days, you try to appear normal at work while you wait for the news to break. It's hard to concentrate, isn't it? Mr. Gardner, your boss, has to call you on the carpet because of absent-minded errors you make in the daily classified section. The others notice you aren't eating at lunchtime. Five days, six days, a week. Nothing happens. They must have found the car. They couldn't miss it parked down the highway ten miles. Finally, you deliberately stroll into the city hall and look up Chief of Police Norton. Well, hello, Harold. Sit down, sit down, have a chair. Thank Where have you. you been keeping yourself? Missed you at the lodge meeting the other night. Oh, I've been pretty busy. How about you? Ha, <laughs> ha, Never a dull moment around here. You know, police work's funny. Yeah? Sometimes it gets so quiet you can hardly stand it. Have trouble keeping the men in line. I can hardly blame them playing around with traffic violations day after day. <laughs> men, all of a sudden, everyone gets so darn busy he wishes he had six hands. Yeah, look. Like now, for instance. You got a handful, huh? Uh-huh. This is a quiet town, Harold. Too quiet sometimes, almost like a snake coiling up ready to strike. Last week, nothing but traffic violations. Well, maybe a bunch of wild kids breaking a store window somewhere. This week, stolen automobiles. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Just gave the story to one of your boys. That isn't all. We got a murderer on our hands. Huh? Uh-huh. Somebody right in town, too. Just like I was saying, Harold, it's a quiet old burg, but I suppose as long as people get together, there'll be murder. Hmm? Yes. Well, uh, uh what was it? Uh, who... uh, 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 just like all those nosy newspaper guys, aren't you? Sorry, Harold. We can't say anything until we get him. You, uh, got any leads? Sure. There's always leads. Don't worry. We'll get him. When we do, you'll know about it. Oh, excuse me. Norton speaking. Yeah. Fielding? When'd you find the body? Oh, gosh, that's tough. Huh? Well, yeah, Harold's right here. Just happened in. What's it got to do with him? What? Well, that's a funny one. Wait a minute. I'll get Phillips. Say, Harold, what did... Hello? He just ducked out the door. I'll get hold of him for you. Muriel, Muriel. Harold, what on earth? What's wrong? Don't ask questions. We've got to get out of here. What's happened? Norton's found out about Fielding. They found the body. What? Hurry. We've got to get away from here before he comes out here. Too late to run. Get the money. Didn't any use, Harold. Why not? If they'd found the body, they're sure to catch you. You can't hope to get away by running. Me? What, what do you mean, me? I'm not running away, Harold. You're an accomplice. You think so? Well, you're just as guilty as I am. Well, if you hadn't been so... Oh, no, you don't. It's your word against mine. I had nothing to do with it. You had everything to do with it. I told you I was tired of being married to a failure. You failed again, Harold. You even failed at murder. You won't get away with it. What about the money? What money? In the clock, the clock! I didn't know there was any money in the clock. And I'm sure no one will find any there, even if you tell them to look in it. You've hidden it. You've hidden that money somewhere else. Have I, darling? You're going to take it all for yourself when you're rid of me. That's why you said there was no hurry. You planned it this way, didn't you? Perhaps. Well, you won't get away with it, Muriel. You won't. I don't know how you can stop me at this point, darling. You see? That's Chief Norton at the door now. I watched him drive up outside while we were talking. Better let him in. Oh, no. Not until I've taken care of you first. No. Hell, no. Oh, I didn't get rid of Fielding's gun, you see. Hell, no. Please. Please, I, I didn't mean anything I said. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, let's take a look at a few of the new post-war products we've all been waiting for. 
According to news releases, the first of the new nylon hosiery will be of pre-war quality. The first new automobiles will be 1942 models with improvements added. But when it comes to gasoline, new signal gasoline, ah, that's another story. For new signal is not just pre-war quality gasoline, not just old-style gasoline improved, but an entirely new type of motor fuel with performance features that until recently were reserved for war. You see, science has long known that gasoline is composed of molecules, and each molecule is an arrangement of atoms. The way those atoms are arranged determines how much power you get from the gasoline. Well, in old-style gasolines, the molecules were left just as nature made them. But recently, certain chemists found out how to take gasoline molecules apart, then rearrange the atoms in an entirely new way. The result is new signal, an entirely new type super fuel with quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, and longer mileage. Because these are all features you can actually feel, see, and hear, we urge you to let just one tank full of new signal gasoline talk for itself. Let its performance in your own car show you why new signal actually is the new post-war gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. It was too late to do anything else, wasn't it, Harold? Too late to do anything but get even. And you did it very efficiently. Muriel, your wife, she's dead now, lying at your feet, as Chief Norton comes into the room. Harold, what got into you? You've killed her deliberately. It doesn't matter. Good Lord, man, what are you talking about? You've committed a murder. Doesn't that mean anything to you? He was as guilty as I am. She was in on it, too, understand? She wanted the money, the 50000 She wouldn't give me any peace. When Fielding came back for his money... Fielding? What Fielding? Richard. It was his money in the clock. She made me kill him, Norton. She made me. He came to the house for the money? Yes. He had a scar on his right cheek? Yes, of course he did. Oh, will you drop it? I've had enough. Wait a minute. You've made an awful mistake, Harold. What? The man you killed was the murderer I told you we were looking for. He was Richard Fielding's partner in a bank robbery last year. Murder? Yes. They quarreled over the money, and he killed Fielding. When he broke out of the pen last week, they notified us, figuring he'd check in here sooner or later. Yes, but down at your office, what were you talking about on, on the telephone? Sabina Fielding. She died last night. Sabina? Yes. But I thought... <laughs> Funny. I've always thought Sabina was a pretty good judge of character. She sure missed the boat this time. What do you mean? She must have taken a fancy to you and your wife, left the house and everything in it to the two of you. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Leslie Edgley, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you try New Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.